Daddy and Molly always loved visiting Grandpa and Granny Pig. Even though the old couple weren't Billy or Molly's actual grandparents, it was like they were. This oak tree was planted by Grandpa's parents just before he was born. It's so beautiful. That's nearly a hundred years ago. Wow, that's even older than my mum and dad. When you were born, did you live in a cave? <laughs> Not quite, but we didn't have cars to drive. We used horses and there was no electricity either. That'll be the strawberry jam. I'll get this. Firewood to Mr Limpy. And when I'm over at his place... See if he needs anything else. I'll have plenty of strawberry jam. <laughs> what are you two giggling about? We like the way you finish each other's sentences. <laughs> it's because we've been together. For such a long time. Oh, I just did it again. <laughs> <laughs> and I know what you're going to say next. Oh, really? You're going to say, don't overdo it carrying the firewood. Oh, I guess he does know what I'm going to say. Even if he's not going to take any notice. <laughs> <laughs> Millie and Molly helped Grandpa deliver the firewood. That lot should keep Mr Limpy going for a bit. Grandpa, Molly's got a riddle. <laughs> oh, yes. What side of a cat has more hair? Hmm. I don't know, Molly. What side of a cat does have more hair? The outside. <laughs> oh, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> they were all going to spend a fun afternoon together. Molly, it's time Grandpa was up from his nap. You can tell him another riddle, too. Grandpa, Grandpa, I've got a riddle. I'm and what about you, Millie? Been on any adventures lately? Well, I'm thinking about going to a jungle. Granny Peg, Granny Peg, Grandpa can't get out of bed. He didn't even oh. laugh at my riddle. Now, don't fuss. I'm just feeling a bit tired, that's all. I'll fuss if I like. Millie, Molly, I want you to run into town and fetch Dr Smiley. Quick as you can now. Millie and Molly ran as fast as their legs would take them, all the way into town, to get Dr Smiley. There's nothing to worry about, Granny Peg. Grandpa's just wearing out. It's time he went a bit slower. Now, let me finish up in here. I won't be long. Thank you, Doctor. Come on, girls. There's still plenty to do with my strawberry jam. You have to think about Granny Peg. She'll live to be a hundred, but... But I won't. How much longer have I got? You may not see another winter. Right. Thanks for telling me, Doctor Smiley. There are a few things I need to do. Well... Try to do them a bit slower. But of course, Grandpa wasn't going to do them a bit slower. So instead of arguing with him, Millie and Molly helped him stack the firewood. And the next day, bag all the potatoes. And the day after that, stack the pumpkins out of the weather. And finally, they picked all the strawberries from Grandpa's famous strawberry patch. Granny Pig's going to make lots of jam with these. That's the idea. Thanks for all your help. I've got a little something for you both. What is it? They're acorns. A seed of an oak tree like that one. If you plant them and look after them, they'll grow. Like you, into something quite beautiful. Thank you. Thanks, Grandpa. We'll look after them and help them grow. And think of you every time you look at them. <sighs> What's wrong, Grandpa? Nothing, Millie. Nothing at all. In fact, everything is fine. Everything is ready. Hello, Grandpa! When Millie and Molly turned up the next day, they found Granny Peg sitting under the oak tree, looking very sad. Granny Peg, what's wrong? Why are you crying? Oh, uh, Grandpa... Grandpa finally wore out last night. Oh! He left me this note. You can read it out, if, if you like. My dear Granny Peg, there are enough pumpkins, potatoes and firewood to last you until, until you, you are, are 100. 100. And there's enough strawberry jam for everybody. Please put me under the oak tree and 
I will wait for you there. Love. Grandpa. Grandpa. Now that Granny Peg was alone, Millie and Molly spent more time with her. They often sat together under the old oak to be close to Grandpa. And this photo is of us 75 years ago on our wedding day. You look beautiful and Grandpa's so handsome. Indeed he was. You might get married one day, Molly. What kind of a man would you like to marry? <laughs> well, he'd have to like riddles. <laughs> <laughs> And what about you, Millie? Oh, I don't think I'll get married. I'm going to have adventures and live at the South Pole. You could do both. And good morning, Granny Peg. Well, if it isn't Little John Oddbottom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the town planner now. Well, John Oddbottom, what can we do for you? I'm here to inform you that under local bylaw 266A, this land and all holdings will be resumed under the Act to facilitate the construction of a new thoroughfare. What did he say? I think they want to build a road. A highway, directly through here, all the way to town. But the tree's in the way. Hmm. Under Ordinance 2945 of the Tree Removal Act, subsection 11B, the tree will be cut down. Oh! No! But Grandpa's here. He's waiting for me under this beautiful old tree. Oh, I'm sorry, but the government and the council have elected to exercise their authority in this matter and it would be a contravention of my duty not to enforce the order. I beg your pardon? He says they have to cut down the tree to make way for the highway. <laughs> Wait! Don't you like trees, Mr Oddbottom? Oh, I love all herbaceous and woody perennial life. And I climbed this very quirkous robot when I was just a little older than you. He did. But uh, we require a new highway into town. Good day to you all. Millie and Molly tried not to think about what was going to happen to the oak tree. Instead, they tried to think about Granny Peg's 100th birthday. Do you think she'll like this yellow paper? Of course. Everyone likes yellow. When the day came, Granny Peg didn't want a big party. She was just happy to have a quiet afternoon with Millie and Molly. Here's some of my special pumpkin scones. Oh, my favourite. I made them with the last of the pumpkins Grandpa grew. You can put some strawberry jam on them if you like. Yes, please. Oh, is that all the jam that's left? Yes, but, but you can use it. Just don't eat too much because I'm making mashed potatoes with dinner and that'll be the end of them too. The potatoes Grandpa grew? They've lasted a long time, haven't they? We've bought you something, Granny Peg. Happy 100th birthday. For me? Well, this is a nice surprise. Oh, it's lovely. It's a picture of Molly and me with Grandpa. I mixed up a riddle and we laughed really hard. <laughs> Thank you so very much, girls. It's the best present I've ever had. After Millie and Molly went home, a happy but tired Granny Pig put the very last log on the fire and climbed into the nice warm bed she used to share with Grandpa. That night, Granny Peg began her journey to be with Grandpa once again. My acorn's growing. Mine too. One each for Grandpa and Granny Peg. Hey, Grandpa and Granny Peg both had long and happy lives, and now they'll be together forever under the old oak tree. But later that week, Millie and Molly saw the town planner driving towards Grandpa and Granny Peg's house, followed by big road-building machines. They're going 
to cut down the old tree. We've got to stop them. Please, please, leave Grandpa and Granny Pet alone. You can't cut down that tree. Please. I've discovered a little known subsection of the town planning and thoroughfare bylaws. <clears throat> The officer supervising a project may show discretion when an object of value or significance is involved. Does that mean you're going to cut down the tree? No. It means that I can make them build the road around the tree. The tree stays and so do Grandpa and Granny Pig. Together. Yay! <laughs> and whenever people travel to Millie and Molly's town, they always wonder why the road kinks around the grand old oak tree. Millie and Molly know why. <laughs> Millie and Molly had brought their cats to school because Miss Blythe had asked them to. Marmalade is my cat, and I love her, even though sometimes she can be naughty. <laughs> Thank you, Millie. And what about your pussycat, Molly? Well, this is Tomcat, and he's a boy cat. And he's best friends with Millie's cat, Marmalade. Oh, and he likes yellow, like Millie and me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Molly. Who wants to bring in their pet tomorrow? Fine. Poppy and Alf, we look forward to seeing your pets tomorrow. Now, I hope you're all getting your pets in shape for pet day. It's two weeks away. Yes, Miss Blythe! There'll be a couple of mystery prizes and one for the most obedient pet in the whole class. Stay there, Marmalade. Millie and Molly were sure that Marmalade and Tomcat knew how to be obedient. Marmalade first. Marmalade, come here. Come on, Marmalade. Marmalade. Oh, come on, Marmalade. Tomcat will do it. Tomcat! Tomcat! Here, puss, puss, puss! Ah! 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 Mm. This could take forever. This is Torty. He's a long-necked tortoise who likes eating insects and worms. This isn't my dog. He's a stray, but I look after him when he comes to visit our caravan. We call him Puddles, because sometimes he makes mistakes and has to go outside. Oh, dear. <laughs> I think it's time he went outside. <laughs> Come on, Puddles. Miss Blythe? Yes, Harry? Do I have to have a pet to come to pet day? Of course not. I'm sure you'll have fun enjoying other people's pets. Mm. No. Millie and Molly felt sorry that Harry didn't have a pet, but they had their own problems to solve for pet day. Obedience problems. Get back! Get back! Good dog, Scout! Get around! Scout's so obedient, Farmer Higgity. He is. Tomcat could never do that. Mummily neither. Can I try calling Scout? Sure, call him. Scout! Scout! Come here, boy. <laughs> he did it. <laughs> if you like, you can take him to Pet A instead of Marmalade. Scout will win for sure. Oh, I couldn't do that. Marmalade's my pet. I just have to get her to do what Scout does. Well, the best trick is to feed Marmalade and Tomcat when you call. If they think they're going to get fed, they'll be very obedient and come every time you call. This is Zoldan. He protects my house. I have to talk to him in Martian. Ziggity doa, Zoldan. Ooh. I told him dinosaurs from outer space are coming to eat my bedroom. Wow! This is Roger the goat. He eats anything. One day he even ate my homework. I remember that, Jack. I also remember not quite believing you. Oh, he's eating my spirit. Down my spelling book. Sorry, Miss Blythe. What's wrong, Harry? I wish I Sorry, could have a pet that could eat my homework. No. Farmer Hegarty has lots of animals. Maybe he could lend you one. They're all too big. I live in a flat. Me too. You could have a cat like me. I can't. Mum's allergic. Oh, oh. oh dear. Well, it looks like no spelling today. Fortunately, he hasn't eaten the arithmetic book. Aww. That afternoon, Millie tried Farmer Hegarty's obedience trick with the food. Marmalade? Marmalade! What a good 
pet you are. Are you going to win the prize for the most obedient pet? I think you are. Molly tried too, with the same success. Come on, Tom Cat. Look what I've got. Nice, tasty, fishy treats for a good pussy cat. <laughs> good boy. This is Mr. Cotton Bottom. <laughs> <laughs> he likes lettuce and carrots and leaves little jelly beans everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, my pet's too big to bring into the classroom. So he's looking through the window. <laughs> oh, well, bless my Scottish soul. <laughs> <laughs> Millie tried hard to think of a pet that Harry could have. But when Marmalade stopped being obedient... I've got your favourite dinner. Millie couldn't Marmalade. worry about Harry too. Marmalade! Come here, Marmalade! Oh, Marmalade! But Molly had a thought. A budgie would be just the pet for Harry. Oh, sorry, Molly. I've just sold the last one. Was poor Harry ever going to get a pet of his own? Marmalade? What's down there? Marmalade! Now I know why you were being naughty this afternoon. There was a mouse in the house. Good pussycat. Now, what'll I do with this mouse? This is Stinky the skunk. Oh. He's called Stinky because he can spray his stink a really long way. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice, George. I think perhaps he should go outside. Don't worry. He only sprays when he gets a fright. Well, thank you, George. Is there anyone else with a pet today? Me, Miss Blythe. Me. I got a pet. Wonderful, Harry. Millie gave it to me. It's a mouse. His name is Brian. Oh, oh no. I'm allergic. <laughs> When pet day arrived, Millie and Molly were still hopeful that Marmalade or Tomcat would be more obedient than all the other pets and might win the prize for most obedient pet. <laughs> right then. Thank you, everyone. What a lovely group of pets we have today. But not everyone can win, so here are the prizes. The prize for the smallest pet goes to Joe for his hermit crab. Yay! Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Joe! Oh, really wow. wow. The prize for the biggest pet goes to Chloe for her wonderful horse. Oh, well, oh, good Chloe! Oh, yeah. Thank you, Congratulations, <laughs> Chloe! And the prize for most unusual pet goes to George for Stinky the Skunk. Oh, yeah. What about my dog? He speaks Martian. That's unusual. Humphrey, you have to admit, Stinky is very unusual. He should get the prize for the stinkiest pet. Mum says she can still smell it. <laughs> now, the final prize for the most obedient pet. I'd like you all to put your pets on the rope over here. Good luck with Marmalade, Millie. Thanks, Molly. Good luck with Tom Cat. Now hurry along, everyone. Remember, your name is Brian. Don't forget to come out when I call you. Zoldan, Zipper the Nasta Jenner. Be the best. Teacher. All right, all the pet owners back to your start positions. And then we'll start. Now quiet, everyone. Almost everyone's animal was being obedient. Except Harry's mouse, Brian, who hadn't even come out of his box. Please, Brian, please come out. Yeah!
stay here. Brian's oh. run away. Oh, Harry. Never mind, Harry. Mom will even find you a new pet. She's not very obedient, but she's a good mouser. I don't want a new pet. I want Brian. There he is. That's Brian. Oh, Brian. <laughs> Brian, it's tickling. Well, I declare Harry and Brian the winners. Um, I can't come too close. I'm allergic to mice, you know. Hooray! Toshi came second! Oh, oh yeah. yeah! I can't help it, stupid skunk. Now even Zoldan won't come near me. Zoldan! Zena Zenaban! <laughs> come back, you stupid skunk! For the rest of the afternoon, everyone went about collecting their pets. <laughs> And that night, the two best friends decided that their cats were very special, even if they weren't always obedient. I'd never trade Marmalade in for Scout or any other pet. Me neither. Especially not a skunk. <laughs> they were visiting a new friend, Maxter. He'd just moved to town from the city and he had something special. Hello, I'm Millie and this is Molly. Well, well, well. Pass it, pass it to him. Oh, We've come to play with Maxter and see his giant television set. You'd best come in then. It was very interesting. Millie and Molly have come to play with you, Maxter. They can watch the TV with me. Oh, gee, thanks, Maxter. We've never seen a television this big before. Yes! Run! Go! Woohoo! Is it true you've got 20 channels? 45. Oh. oh! But it never seems to get off this channel. It only has soccer. We don't mind. Great kick! Shoot! 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 Oh, great pass! It's a great kick in the hair! Go! Go! Oh. Do you ever watch anything else? No. Not even cartoons? Are there any about soccer? I don't think so. He's offside! You can't do that! Well, thank you very much for letting us watch your big television. We might go outside now. OK, bye. Wouldn't you like to come out and play too? Outside? Why? And he never plays outside. He's always inside. Really? No fresh air, no exercise. I thought you said Max liked soccer. He does, but he never plays it, only watches it on TV. On the biggest oh. TV in the whole wide world. That's big. He lived in the city and didn't have a park. Or anything. Well, he does now. Maybe he needs to learn to play outside. Ah! Marmalade must be hungry. It's delicious flesh. Mum? Dad? Yes, Millie? You want to know how to teach Maxter to play outside? Invite him to the park. Hmm. OK. But can we get a television as big as the one Maxter has? Of course. Really? As soon as you've finished school and high school and university and get a job so you can pay for it. Dad? This ferocious killing machine with its three rows of razor sharp. <laughs> so Millie and Molly invited Maxter to the park. Not too high. They played on the swings and waited for Maxter. <laughs> they played on the roundabout, but still no Maxter. <laughs> they played on the slippery dip. There was no sign of Maxter. So finally, Millie and Molly went to find out if something was wrong. Oh! Oh! Oh my goodness! He's still watching the television. His foot was miles over the line! Ah! Well, well, well. You said you'd go to the park and here you are stuck in front 
under the TV. It's going off. No! Wait! Please! Can we watch cartoons? No television. Please? Outside, you can play in the backyard with your new friends. Get some fresh air and exercise. It'll be fun. Hmm. But no sooner had they all gone outside than Maxter had other plans. But now! But no matter what Maxter's mother said, Maxter always found a way to watch television. Maxter! Hi. This old TV used to belong to my grand, but luckily it still works. I kept it for emergencies. Go! A go! Millie and Molly wondered if Maxter would ever stop watching television. By the time the weekend came, Millie and Molly had a plan. They were going to tempt Baxter outside. No! Kick it to the other man! Oh, this way! Around hmm? the back, Molly! Coming! Coming! It's heavy! Oh, oh that shouldn't be a gun! I love this one! OK, thanks, Millie! This is going to be fun! Handball! had to choose. Television or find out what those girls were up to. in the tree. And we can all play in it. You... you mean a tree shack? Tree hut! I've never seen a real tree hut before. Only on television. If you help us, you'll have your very own. Really? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. The rest of the day, Millie, Molly and Maxter worked hard to build their tree hut. And Maxter didn't once think about watching television. Well, well, well! Hey Mum, look what we made! Without any help or anything, all by ourselves! This is our tree hut! And these are our curtains! And we even have a lift! Yeah! Isn't it great? It's magnificent! Well done. But it's time to get down now. Millie and Molly have to go home. OK. Come in. But the tree hut was the beginning of a new problem with Maxter. I'm staying up here for dinner. Can you bring me my soccer magazines? Please, Mum. Maxter stayed in the tree hut for the rest of the afternoon. Maxter stayed in the tree hut for dinner. Maxter stayed in the tree hut to sleep. Maxter stayed in the tree hut even when it rained. 
After a couple of days, Millie and Molly were beginning to wonder whether building the tree hut was a good idea after all. At least Max is getting lots of fresh air. But no running around. He really likes being up in that tree hut. Yeah, the same as he really likes watching television. When he does something, he really does it. There has to be a way to get him down. Look out! Oh! Sorry! That's all right, Jack. I've just had an idea. Aren't those soccer posts just behind Max's house? Yeah, you can see the tree hut, so thanks. Jack, will you and Tom do us a favour? Hi, Maxter. We've come to look at the view. Yeah. View? It's just the house. But what about out here? Here I come. Here comes a goal. A soccer field. You could play soccer instead of reading about it. Or watching on a TV. Jack and Tom are in a team. You could join. had won Man of the Match. Well done, Maxter. You were great. I've decided on television. Oh, no. We thought you gave up watching television. I did, and I'm going to practice soccer so much that I'll be a soccer star. I'll be on TV instead of watching it. <laughs> Millie and Molly knew that Maxter probably would be a soccer star because when he did something, he really did it. 